It takes an exceptional person to become a great physician or scientist. But excellence in medicine requires relationships that connect. And that's why at Weill Cornell we place a special focus on mentoring. It's the foundation of the best patient care and the next big discoveries. That emphasis starts here in the Dean's office and I am very proud of the results. I was drawn to biology because it helped to explain so many things that you just kind of take for granted. In the fall, you've seen that the leaves have changed colors. Why did that happen? Well, biology can tell you exactly why that happened. I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis when I was 18 months old. I think that that did feed into, ultimately, my interest in how things work, how they're put together and operate. It's always been impressive rather than disenchanting. I am a graduate student studying immunology. We study a process that is really important for driving certain kinds of asthma. And we hope that through our work we can develop a drug that helps treat patients that have this kind of asthma. My mentor is Dr. Lori Glimpscher. I joined her lab back at Harvard University, and when she became dean of Weill Cornell Medical College, I moved down to join her. Friday, I'm going to go have a meeting with Lori to discuss the paper we are about to submit for publication. Basically, I need to submit this paper to graduate. It's been stressful for about a year now, but we're finally at the culmination of everything. The goal is always to try to publish in the best it's tier really of journal. So we're aiming high. Sometimes you get too deep in what you're doing and you can't think clearly anymore. And you're just so deeply invested and stuck in your thought that was perfect and beautiful and totally was not real. Sometimes you feel very overwhelmed with all of the things you have to get done. Lori just says, yes, you can. You can do this. She has this incredible ability to convince you that you can do whatever it is that you feel is impossible. show that really no other cell populations are messed up. Next baby wants glycine occurs and at which the phenotype um, starts to manifest. Right. So we've, we've locked down on where it yep. hits. Yeah. And it's kind of sustained at this very high level till it's finally mature. Oh, that's great. She's, she's I hope very, she's on my committee. <laughs> she's very smart. She got her PhD not that long ago. Oh, really? Oh, she beat me. Okay. <laughs> Establish where the problem happens. Yeah. But if you look at GMPs, you got a one what happens. Normal. Right, exactly. Right. So. I don't think that my experience with Lori is ever really going to leave my consciousness. And 20 years from now, her influence will be there. Glad we kept him here instead of going to the West Coast. Not totally. Yeah, we'll go to the West Coast after he's done or something. She know. asks about my boyfriend and how things are going. Back when he lived in Boston, she would occasionally just say, so when's he moving down? She always thinks that the conversation is really not only equal, but sometimes even edging towards female-centric. This is where all of the ideas about how to do science, how to approach science, how to approach life, really, are all ingrained and they become more concrete. Her influence on me cannot be overstated. Multiple parallel tracks of my life are coming together right now, in a positive way. My boyfriend just moved down. I'm about to graduate from my PhD program. So we have about a year and a half left to enjoy New York. And then the future is completely open. I finished. Good job. But we're both really excited to tackle it.